Know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight, even though the ruler forbid it. If fighting will not result in victory, then you must not fight even at the ruler's bidding. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. Pretend inferiority and encourage his arrogance. If your opponent is of choleric temper, irritate him. To fight and conquer in all our battles is not supreme excellence. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. The opportunity to secure ourselves against defeat lies in our own hands, but the opportunity of defeating the enemy is provided by the enemy himself. The art of war teaches us to rely not on the likelihood of the enemy's not coming, but on our own readiness to receive him, not on the chance of his not attacking, but rather on the fact that we have made our position unassailable. Quickness is the essence of the war. Bark the enemy's power, force him to reveal himself. The quality of decision is like the well-timed swoop of a falcon, which enables it to strike and destroy its victim. The general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service for his sovereign is the jewel of the kingdom. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its rank. When envoys are sent with compliments in their mouths, it is a sign that the enemy wishes for a truce. For to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. There has never been a protracted war from which a country has benefited. The good fighters of old first put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat and then waited for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. If our soldiers are not overburdened with money, it is not because they have a distaste for riches. If their lives are not unduly long, it is not because they are disinclined to longevity. Now, the reason the enlightened prince and the wise general conquer the enemy whenever they move and their achievements surpass those of ordinary men is for knowledge. Hence, the general is skillful in attack, whose opponent does not know what to defend, and he is skillful in defense, whose opponent does not know what to attack. Victorious warriors win first 
and then go to war. While defeated warriors, go to war first and then seek to win. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. If fighting is sure to result in victory, then you must fight, even though the ruler forbid it. If fighting will not result in victory, then you must not fight, even at the ruler's bidding. All men can see these tactics, whereby I conquer, but what none can see is the strategy out of which victory is evolved. Know your enemy and know yourself, and you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. Regard your soldiers as your children and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Look on them as your own beloved sons, and they will stand by you even unto death. He who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not will be victorious. The general who wins the battle makes many calculations. In his temple, before the battle is fought, the general who loses makes but few calculations beforehand. If you are far from the enemy, make him believe you are near. A good commander is benevolent and unconcerned with fame. If someone disrespects you, smile in front of him, and he will be ashamed of himself. The enlightened ruler is heedful, and the good general full of caution. To see victory only when it is within the ken of the common herd is not the acme of excellence. Supreme excellence consists in breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. Secret operations are essential in war. Upon them, the army relies to make its every move. Prohibit the taking of omens and do away with superstitious doubts. Then, until death itself comes, no calamity need be feared. If ignorant both of your enemy and yourself, you are certain to be in peril. Victory usually goes to the army who has better trained officers and men. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. It is only the enlightened ruler and the wise general who will use the highest intelligence of the army for the purposes of spying, and thereby they achieve great results. For them to perceive the advantage of defeating the enemy, they must also have their rewards. If we know that our own men are in a condition to attack, but are unaware that the enemy is not open to attack, we have gone only halfway towards victory.